The purpose of this video is to help users of EasyDrill get familiar with the basic operation of the program within the HP 50G calculator environment. 90% of the time, the very first question I get is how to access the calculator when in the EasyDrill environment, or conversely, how to restart EasyDrill when the calculator stack is displayed. Well, here you see the calculator with the survey menu on display. Note that for the purposes of this video, the calculator view has been rearranged to fit better this video screen. So, to exit EasyDrill at any point in the program, simply press the ON key. So you see, the calculator stack is now accessible. Note the two messages in the stacks level 1 and 2. They are just reminders and you can delete them if you want with a backspace key. Here I have replaced the two bottom messages because I wish to explain to you a little further what this cryptic bottom message custom arrow A equals start means. Observe above and left of the H key you will see the word custom written in white. That means that this is a function that's accessible by pressing the left shift and then the H key. This will normally access the custom menu of EasyDrill, which is basically this SVY and OFF functions that you see here. But sometimes, for whatever reason, you may not have this custom menu available. So for example, if you press the tool, you will see that all these other functions appear here and uh, you may want to investigate them some sometime to uh, you know, in the normal use of the calculator. But anyway, as you see, the custom menu has disappeared and now you have, or you wish to restart EasyDrills, you'd go left shift and then custom and you can see this menu is recovered. Another question that has come up deals with the following situation. Again, as you can see, the survey menu is displayed. For one reason or another, we wish to access the calculator and instead of pressing on first, we press some other key by mistake. So we go ahead and press the 5 key and by mistake. As you can see, this causes the stack to be displayed, but with a message telling you that the only keys available are the F1 through F6 keys, the ON key and the MODE key. In other words, even though the stack is displayed, we are still within the EasyDrill environment. If we still wanted to exit EasyDrill from here, then we would have to press the ON key again. And here we go. And then if for some reason you don't want to do anything at this point, you press the OFF key and the calculator goes off. I would now like to show you a little hidden feature that's available from the survey menu. First of all, let's turn on the calculator and we see that it has gone straight to the survey menu. This is because we turned it off using the OFF function in the previous example. Now let's suppose that for some reason or another you wish to make some other well file active. For example, you want to have a look at the plan of the current well so you can have a look at its surveys. Normally the way you would do that is you would go to the main menu and then back to the survey menu and upon entering this you press enter, you switch wells and you press enter and here we are at the plan. Another way to do exactly the same thing would require you to press the left shift key and then the A menu key and then you see that we are at the same spot as before. From here we can press the enter key and then choose to go back to the, to the main uh, survey and then press enter and here we are switched again. I would like now to show you some of the features available within the input forms that EasyDrill uses. The input forms are those screens where you are expected to enter a number or a word like yes or no or something like that. Here we have the survey menu for a well that's currently at 7900 feet. So we go to the, we press survey here and we enter this next screen which is the input form for this, for the measure depth and as you can see it, as it is requesting that we enter the next measure depth and we see that 
7900, which is the value of the last entered measure depth, is showing as default. This is to remind you basically what where you're at. So let us suppose that for some reason the 7900 is wrong and you wish to delete it. Notice this little message on the bottom on the menu area where it says minus MD goes back to previous. Basically what this means is that if you make the default measure depth value negative and you press enter you will delete that survey. So you see we press plus minus here that makes that number negative. We press enter and the program resets to the previous survey. You could make calculations on this screen just like you would with a calculator. What you need to remember is that you need to use space wherever you would normally use enter when using the normal calculator. So if we wanted to add 93 feet to this number and we don't want to calculate that number in our heads, all we need to do is move the cursor to the end, then add a space, then type 93, then add another space, then enter the plus sign, and then press enter. Then we could use the same previous inclination and the same previous azimuth, and we see now that the survey depth that is showing is the previous survey depth plus 93 feet. We could press the enter key here and calculate that survey and then access and all the other functions of the calculator project or do a, do a traveling cylinder plot and then you, you get out of here and then let's say you to eliminate that uh, projection like as explained before we make this number negative and we press enter and here we are and then we press enter again and we get back to the survey menu. Note that if you don't put a space in the right place there's no problem the calculator will alert you to that. For example if I went to the end here and I forgot to put a space then t type 93 then space then plus because there is no space here and I press enter you see we get an error and you get a second chance. Another thing that I should point out is that this uh, explanation I just gave you is if the operating mode of the calculator is set to uh, RPN. If you are one of those people who don't have any HP experience and prefer to use the algebraic mode, then no problem. You use the same idea. You put a space here, then you put the plus sign, then another space, then 93, then enter but in this case it will give me an error because this particular calculator is set to RPN mode. So if I press enter here, I get an error. Lastly, I'd like to point out to you another use for the on or also called cancel key. Let's say we have this survey here, 7892.25, and our next survey is 7950, so we type 7950, and then we have a little problem that we have these three little characters at the end which we do not want. You would, uh, you could uh, simply press space, space, space. There is another way to do this. Um, here we see the 7892.25 again. And if we wanted to type some other number on top of that and not be bothered by some extra digits here or there, we can simply press the on key and that deletes that display and you could type 7950, no problem at all, and then press enter. Uh, what I'd like you to understand here is that in this case the on key is used to delete that field. If you press the on key again then you would uh, return to the calculator stack.